Hey, what's up everybody? John Motzenbacher. So I have been through absolute hell for the last umpteen months. I have no idea. Uh, a lot of you that are going to be watching this video are in the real estate space. Some of you are not. I'm just making a blanket video, blah, 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 blah. So basically, a realtor that has never done a off-market deal brought me a deal. And essentially, he got that deal from somebody else. So this, this house is in Citrus Heights, California. The guy was going through foreclosure. He was going to lose his house, blah, blah, blah. I drive up to Northern California, the city of Citrus Heights, to have a look at this property and see what I can do to help this guy out. Uh, essentially, the house is in foreclosure, like I said. It's got a tenant in there, uh, but there are some other uh, people living in the house, and the house is just completely, um, it, it, it's a gut. It needs absolutely everything. Air conditioner isn't working. Uh, the, the house is just, I mean, it's in total disarray. It's a, it's a total gut job. I'm going to probably need roughly a hundred thousand dollars to put this thing back together. ARV after repair value for those that are not in the space, roughly 400, $425,000. If everything's fixed on this house, you put it on the market in that neighborhood, that's what you can expect. In this neighborhood, not only is this house distressed, the entire neighborhood is distressed. Uh, house next door is all jacked up. House across the street's got a fucking tarp on the roof. Like, this thing is, uh, the whole neighborhood is just completely fucked. So, I drive there. I've got another buddy in Northern California that is a realtor. He also does some fix and flips. He is going to be my, quote, end buyer. So I put all of this, this uh, together. I take uh, the realtor with me. He's Again, he's going to be my end buyer. And I go look at this house. Uh, prior to me going to look at this house, I got a third-party authorization. Again, for those uh, that are not in the space, a third-party authorization is basically a document that the seller signs that gives me the right to talk to the bank on their behalf. I talk to the bank, find out what the payoff is on the house, et cetera, and so forth. Uh, this guy hasn't been making payments since COVID. So he owed like $157,000 on the house. And then he hasn't been making payments. He got the forbearance and all of that. Long story short, 202000 is what he owes on the house. So I'm thinking, okay, well, uh, you know, I'm buying it at roughly 50 cents on the dollar. You know, we can make this deal work because keep in mind, let's just use round numbers. If I put 200,000 towards the bank and I put another 100,000 uh, in repairs, now I'm in at roughly 300,000. I can sell this house for 400,000. There's enough margin in there to make some money on this deal. You know, it had all the components to make it work. I open up escrow with a local title company that does a majority of my escrows. They pull a preliminary title report, which basically lists, you know, any uh, liens, encumbrances, whatever. Uh, come to find out that not only do we owe $202,000 to the bank, I was going to give $10,000 to the seller. So I thought I was going to be in this thing $212,000. So the seller's going to make some money. Obviously, I'm going to make some money when I sell this to my end buyer, yada, yada, yada. Find out that the seller has a $25,000 IRS um, lien on the house. And there's a couple of judgments and... The, the uh, State Board of Equalization has something on him. And basically, just based on the preliminary title report, without the actual payoffs, I'm just kind of guesstimating what it's going to take to buy this house. So I went from thinking, hey, I'm going to pay $202,000 to the bank, give the seller ten grand. i am in this thing two twelve, 
to finding out he's got all of this other debt. So I just, you know, roughly guesstimate, hey, I'm going to need to pay about $40,000 in liens, et cetera, and so forth, and the $10,000 to the seller. Now I'm in this thing roughly $252,000. Throw another $100,000 on top of that. Now we're, quote, into it, three fifty-two, dollars right? I go sell this thing on the market for $400,000. There's not a lot of space. In your mind, you're thinking, well, yeah, there's $50,000, but there's not. Because when you put this thing on the market, I'm just going to use round numbers again, with closing costs, realtor fees, etc. I use the number uh, 10%. So do the math. I'm in at three fifty. dollars I sell it for $400,000. $40,000 in fees, etc. and so forth leaves a $10,000 profit. Who would risk $350,000 to make 10 grand? It's too thin of a deal. So my buddy that's a realtor, uh, I mean, there's so many different stories in this entire saga. This thing started in May. I put it under contract uh, the beginning of June. Here we are basically, you know, end of August, beginning of September. I'll get into that. He hires a... Um, home inspector to get a look and make sure everything's good, et cetera, and so forth. The home inspector will not climb under the house to check it out. The, the termite uh, inspection, they will not climb under the house because there's a cat underneath the house. And the cats are very territorial and the cat could attack him. I'm thinking when I'm crawling under a house, the cat is the least of my fucking concern. I'm thinking about spiders and rats and all kinds of other shit. But these motherfuckers are worried about a cat going fucking crazy and fucking attacking the guy. Okay, so they won't crawl under the house unless the fucking cat is removed. Which, I'm like, am I in the fucking twilight zone? Like, what is going on? Okay, I've never even heard of that before. But anyway, we continue on. So... Uh, long story short, my realtor buddy, he's like, Hey, you know, this thing's going to take way too much money to put this thing together. Uh, I'm not your buyer, which I totally understand. I am about to cancel the contract because I would concur. This thing is just, there's just too much debt on this thing. The realtor that I was going to sell it to, he was like, Hey, I got a guy that'll buy this thing. He'll pay two ninety dollars for it. I'm like, who in the fuck has any experience that is going to way overpay for this house at $290,000? So let's do the math. Now you're in at two ninety, hundred thousand. dollars $100,000. It's worth $400,000. Unless you're living in it, you're buying and holding it. That deal makes no sense. Um, blah, 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 blah. So this thing wouldn't qualify for finance or anything because of its dilapidated condition, blah, blah, blah. So I can't get any of the, the original title company. I can't get any of the payoffs. I can't, they, they get the, the uh, tax information, et cetera, and so forth. But there's a judgment from a law office. They can't get in the information. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, maybe 45 days go by. I mean, the title company that I use all the time, they can't get the information. I'm like, well, fuck this. I got to cancel this deal. But then my buddy's like, hey, I got somebody that'll buy this thing. So then I'm like, okay, well, let me open up title with another uh, title company that I've used before that does a lot of the creative deals and whatnot. Um, shouldn't be an issue. Open it up with them. First couple of days, they're able to get the um, the lien that the attorneys would not give the first title company. They're able to get the lien information. But now they can't get the IRS to give them their payoffs. So now I'm stuck in this limbo. The first title company can get all the IRS stuff, but the second title company can't get all the IRS stuff. I can't close title without all the payoffs. So the long story short on that is the buyer comes in, he takes a look at the house. He will not pay 290, but he'll pay 285. Okay, great. I'm going to sell, I have it under contract for 252. I'm going to sell it to my buddy for 270, who's going to sell it to the end buyer for 285. So he's going to make 15 grand. 
me, the realtor on this side that brought it to me and his friend are going to basically chop 18,000. Not something that I want to do, but I'm trying to get two guys their first deal and I'm trying to, you know, make some money for another guy. So basically we got five people basically wholesaling this thing, which is an absolute shit show. I knew at the beginning, like, this is going to go fucking sideways. Like, this is not going to gonna pan out. I'm basically spinning my wheels. I am the contact for both sides. So every time something goes wrong, I have to explain it to two guys and the seller on this side. I've got to talk to the title company. I've got to talk to my buddy who not only he brought the buyer, but what I found out is, he had a buddy that had a buyer. So that's where the five people, you got me, you got an agent on this side, you got the seller's friend. So there's three on this side that are chopping up the deal. Then there's two guys on the other side that are chopping up the other money. And basically we're going back and forth. Well, I fucked up and let my team, the boots on the ground, go and meet the buyer. So they bring the buyer, they're meeting with him. We figure, they figure out, okay, the squatters now want money. They were tenants and now they want money to leave the place. So my guy, uh, my two dudes meet uh, with the buyer, but they bring the seller. So now I've got the seller who has nothing to do with this buyer. I have a contract, A to B contract, me and the seller, and a B to C contract, me and the buyer, I make the money in the middle, right? So this whole thing starts to go sideways when the squatters won't leave. So basically, we were supposed to close on October 29th. Two weeks prior to that, the buyer meets with the seller and says, hey, I'm going to have to pay these people $2,400, $800 a piece, three people to get out of the house. I want a discount off the price of the house. Well, he doesn't even have a contract with that guy. He's got a contract with me. So any negotiations need to happen with me. So then me and the realtor on this side are in a pissing match because they want me to eat the $2,400 because my team has basically negotiated that out. So whatever money I thought I was making, now it's $2,400 less. So it just keeps getting whittled away, whittled away, whittled away. So yesterday, the, or uh, the 29th, the deal was supposed to close. Well, big shock, the, uh, the squatters were not out of the house. And they've got like a fifth wheel that's in the driveway, a trailer that, you know, that they're living in and whatnot in addition to that. And the agreement is, hey, you got to get all your shit out of the house and you got to get this trailer out of the driveway because the buyer's hard money lender won't lend on the deal until he sees that the dumpster has been dropped off in the driveway. We can't drop the uh, dumpster in the driveway because there's a fifth wheel. So this knucklehead goes over, the buyer, and he uh, has negotiated out the $800 a piece. He decides on the 29th that he's going to give these three dope fiends 500 bucks a piece to help them, you know, whatever it is that they need to get their shit out of the house. And he's going to come back on the 30th and everybody's going to be gone. And, you know, he's going to give them the rest of their money. Well, basically they, I, I'm going to assume that they went and bought a bunch of meth fucking got gacked out of their minds all night long and basically disassembled the fucking trailer that was uh, in the driveway. And now they have it spread out all over the driveway. So not only are they not gone and not only is the trailer not going anywhere, but the trailer's in a million fucking pieces in the driveway. So I'm just like, this is just, I mean, this is absolutely fucking asinine. So basically the deal that was supposed to happen uh, and close on the 29th, again, was supposed to close on the 30th, is now 1 million percent dead because the buyer can't get the money from the hard money lender, the squatters won't leave, the buyer who's an experienced fucking fix and flipper basically gave dope fiends fuel to fuel their dope habit and is surprised that they won't leave. So this guy is out 1,500 bucks. Now, keep in mind, 
the buyer has put a $5,000 non-refundable deposit. Doesn't say anything in my contract that says, hey, I have to deliver the house vacant. You're buying the house as is. So the plan was to get these folks out, but all I have to do is deliver clear title and by paying off this, uh, oh, let me throw this in. I had it under contract for 259,000. Well, the entire time that it took to get all of that information and the payoffs and whatnot, the payoffs went from, let's say 252, to now it's $259,000. So let's call it $260,000. So my $18,000 has now been shrunk into like $10,000. Plus I got to eat another $2,400. So I mean, there's absolutely no money in this thing. And every time something happens, I'm the guy that has to take time to explain it to five different people and title. Well, then the buyer yesterday sends a letter, an email, if you will, to the title company saying, hey, I want my $5,000 back. I didn't know there were squatters in the house when I put my money down, which he absolutely did. He negotiated with them, et cetera, and so forth. But I mean, not technically, matter of factly, I don't have to give you your five grand back, but I feel bad. I just want to get the fuck away from this deal and just stop talking about this house in general. So basically, yesterday, to try to make this a shorter story, Title sends me a, uh, a cancellation of escrow, right? They have my seller's name on the escrow and they've got my buyer or the buyer's name on the escrow uh, of the cancellation that they're canceling with one another. Well, these two people don't even have a fucking contract with one another. Me and the seller have a contract. Me and the buyer have a contract. So basically, title is telling me, well, my uh, escrow instructions have always been between the seller and the buyer. Well, how is that possible? They don't have a contract. I'm the guy in the middle. So essentially, the title company is telling me that the seller needs to cancel with the buyer. There's nothing to fucking cancel. Where did I go? And legally, when I put something under contract, I'm not selling the house. I'm selling my equitable interest in this contract to the buyer, which means legally I can fucking do that without a real estate license, even though I'm a broker, I'm protected, et cetera, and so forth. But essentially, what, the way that title would construct this would make it illegal for me and the other two guys to receive payment on this thing and the other two guys to receive their payment because now we're not contractually protected. I'm not selling my interest anymore. So basically... Every fucking thing that could go wrong with this deal went wrong with this deal. Uh, I learned a lot in this deal. Like, I've been doing this for a minute, but this was unbelievable. I've never had to cancel a contract, ever. And I've never canceled a contract, on market, off market, whatever, on the day of the closing. Okay, so... Um, yeah, so everybody keeps reaching out to me. Uh, hey, what's going on? You know, what was your post about? Well, this is what my post was about. And I'm done talking about it. But essentially, I don't know what the fuck is going on. But like this escrow agent is telling me she's been doing it this way for 40 years, which is just, I mean, I'm just out of fucking loss of words. So essentially... This seller is going to fucking lose their house, whatever it is that they were going to, they weren't going to get any money in their pocket because the IRS fees, et cetera, and so forth. All of their debt is going to still be on them. Uh, and they're probably going to lose the house that they're currently living in. It's just, it, it's absolutely fucked up uh, how this deal went down. Uh, everybody's fault and nobody's fault. So, I don't know uh, why I had to break this down, <laughs> but I did. Uh, I'm tired of talking about it. That's the last time I'm going to talk about it. Um, yeah, that's all I got.